Today I want to go over my favorite piece of home gym equipment, the lever arms. They're something that I think are super underrated, not a lot of people have them. So I want to show you everything that I use them for. They basically can replace any machine in the gym. Anything that's on a fixed range of motion, you can essentially do with lever arms. So I want to show you why I love these things. I have 35 different exercises to show you. I'm not going to show you the setup in between every single exercise because frankly it's going to take a lot of time. I would never do 35 different exercises in a single session. These are called lever arms, iso arms, jammer arms. There's a lot of different names for them, but all they are is an arm that attaches to your rack that swings on a fixed lever system. Go back to like sixth grade science class when you learned about levers. That's all this is. These are adjustable, which I'll show you. You can put them anywhere on the rack and the handles you can move up and down. So these arms that I got are Bells of Steel is the brand. I had to get a little creative with them because they don't really fit my rack. So I had to do a piece of wood in here. I taped furniture stoppers in there to add a little bit of width. And then, it might be hard to see, but I added a little pin. And by me, I mean my friend came by and helped me with this. But there's a pin that goes in the end here. So basically, why I did this. My rack is a Titan rack that they don't sell anymore. It's two inches by two inches with five eighths of an inch hole here. They discontinued it. Most racks are either going to be two inches by three inches or three by three is the most common. And then most racks will also have one inch holes. So because they don't sell this rack anymore, they also don't sell arms for that rack. This is Bells of Steel brand, and for some reason, all of their stuff is two and a third inches width. So it's a little bit wider than my rack, so I had to add this piece of wood and the tape, so it's not a perfect fit. Eventually, I want to get more of a compatible system here. I just have this rack, and I want to stick with it. If you are going to get lever arms, I recommend sticking with the same brand, so these Bells of Steel arms I like. I would recommend getting their rack because this will fit right on it and you can slide it right in. It'll be way easier than all this stuff that I have to do. Or Titan has their own. So one other thing I want to note is I wanted to film this video months ago, but my rack is not bolted down to the ground. So when you put weight on these lever arms, if you put enough weight on and you swing it out, there's momentum and you're going to basically just pull the rack forward. So I have here these legs. I got them from Titan. They are stabilizer feet. Have it on both sides so that way when you swing the weight out, the whole rack is not going to come forward. So if you are going to use lever arms, either bolt down your rack or get something like those so your rack doesn't fall forward on you. But one other thing that you're going to see me using is I have this hitch pin and chain. So what you're going to be able to do with these hitch pins is put it up at the top and then attach this to the pin you have at the end and it'll stop it here. So when we get into doing certain exercises then this gives you a new place to start from. So whereas we usually are doing swinging motions, now say we are doing some kind of a shoulder press, we're starting here at a horizontal position and then pressing up. So this basically allows you to have any kind of starting position, but again, make sure your rack is stable. We'll do chest exercises, legs, back, a little bit of everything to show you. You can essentially do a full body workout with these. Any machine you do in the gym, these can essentially replicate. When I started working out at home, one of the things I missed the most was seated chest press machines. These are great for that. So we're going to start with incline. So I'm using the weight pegs that I bought. You can use spotter arms, anything that you have here to bring the lever arms out so they're not completely flat because it gives us a better starting position. You want to use a bench that is 90 degrees or as close to 90 degrees as you can get. I like to go a little bit further to get a good starting position here 
and then because we are out here, it gives you a good incline press. So you're pressing up and back. So you start at your upper chest and go up. Because we're on a lever and this is going up, if you want it to be a normal chest press and not hit your upper chest, what you're going to want to do is go a slight incline on your bench. And now because we're basically flat and pushing out, this is going to be more of a regular bench because if you follow the motion here, you're starting at your chest and going straight out. Because these arms are angled, now that the bench is angled as well, it's mimicking a regular chest press. Then if you want to do a decline seated bench, I took out the pegs. I went back a little bit further because we want more of a direct outward push. Went on a little bit of an incline here to get into a position where I am at the lower part of my chest. And then when you press, you're basically pressing straight out. If you think about the decline presses at the gym, the hammer press machines, this is how it's going to be. You're basically going to be on a little bit of an incline and you're going to be pushing straight out. And you should be able to feel that in your lower chest. One more great and very underrated chest exercise is the side press. So you get a full stretch this way and then push across your body and out. You should be able to have this positioned the same way that you would do any seated chest press but face the side and then when you set it up on both sides you'll be able to hit your chest. This will emphasize the inner portion of your chest and quite honestly the squeeze that you get. It'll feel very similar to doing chest flies that feels really, really good. So as we get into some different exercises too, I want to show you I have an extra set of hitch pins for each arm. I put an extra hitch pin in a different spot here rather than rely on the one here on the handle just because this makes it a lot easier to adjust. So what I mean is I have a specific height here if I wanted this to go a little bit higher, I can move this out to give this more of an angle, or if I wanted it to go a little bit lower, I can put it here, and the arm will hang a little bit lower, and so on. So you can find the exact position that you need. With any of these exercises, it's going to take some time to really get used to how you need to adjust these. So if you do buy lever arms, just account for the extra time. The first couple weeks that I had these. My workouts took way longer than they should have just because I spent so much time trying to figure out exactly where I wanted to position these. Now I'm really used to it, so it doesn't take very long at all. But just account for that extra time that you're gonna need. So now bench press. You can face either way. I'm gonna face towards the camera, obviously, because it'll be easier, but I can turn this bench here and press the other way. So this is a simple incline press here position it so you are in a starting position very similar to if you had a barbell just above your chest and then you can press straight up. So make sure you're positioned where these will essentially go straight. You don't want these to go back too far or forward too far so it might take playing with the positioning but this should give you a good incline press. Pretty good flat bench. So again, you will want to adjust these to be perfect. This is certainly not perfect for me, but for these purposes, this should show you exactly what we want. So I'm not going to put this one totally into position here for time's sake, but if you have a decline bench, you'll be able to start here and push up and have a good decline bench. The last chest exercise I want to show you is the floor press. This is basically a way to help the top of your bench. If you think about it, when you do a floor press, you're going to stop directly at 90 degrees from the floor, so you're focused on the top of the motion, so it allows you to do more weight than you'd be able to do with a typical barbell. So when you put a plate on, this is going to start in a position probably about here, uh, so you'll be able to get under it easier. So you'll be starting right here where your arm is at 90 degrees already. 
and then pressing, and then coming down to a full rest at the bottom. So that you're going to be able to handle weight much differently than with a barbell. This is a great way to switch things up and to really help if you have a sticking point at the top of your bench press. It's a great exercise. I had to flip this around here because I'm facing into my rack. But if you position these arms so they're straight out with the chains, you will be set up really well for a shoulder press. All right, some gyms have lateral raise machines that you're probably used to the seated ones where your arms are bent on a pad, but some of them have where you grab a handle and your arms stay straight and go out. So this mimics that really well if you position it so it's right below your hip. You'll be able to do pretty good side raises. You'll need to get in a good position and you'll need to find the right height to make this comfortable. But once you find the height, I actually really like these as a way to switch up. I prefer dumbbells for this kind of movement, but to switch things up, it forces your arm to stay straight and it makes the motion a little bit different. Really like it. And then likewise, you can do front raises the same exact way. If you're all the way back here and you go forward, you're not going to be able to get the full range of motion. So you'll step forward so you're a little bit out, and then you'll get the full range of motion, no problem. Another shoulder exercise you can do, which is pretty much what these were originally made for, is the push press. More push press, well, more of an explosive motion. My ceiling's really low. So when I put weight on here, I can't really do this. So I do seated presses. I don't do any of this explosive motion because I will hit my ceiling and it will be very loud and or break my house. But this is something you can do as a standing variation. One thing that I haven't talked about is I got this bar from Bells of Steel because it fits perfectly. So anything that I do here that is single arm, you can throw the bar on and do anything barbell. So it basically mimics a Smith machine really, really well. Depending on the brand you get though, you might not be able to buy a bar that fits perfectly. So what I did before I got this, I went to Home Depot, I spent a couple dollars, I got this rod here, that's 5 eighths of an inch, and then this one inch pipe. This guy right here, that was what I used as my bar for quite a few months because the actual bar was on back order. So if there's one inch holes, you would need to get a one inch rod here and then you can get a two inch pipe so it will mimic a barbell. And then I got fasteners on the ends so it doesn't slide out. But now I got this. So if you can get a bar, I recommend a bar. So this is the other shoulder press that I really like doing is single arm. At the gym, I used to do this on a Smith machine, so this mimics the Smith machine with the bar, but you face sideways and do shoulder press, single arm. My original footage was terrible, so I needed to re-record the following day, but this is a hack squat. You might have seen machines like it in the gym. You're essentially leaning back with your feet out in front of you, so we're going to mimic that here. You can do this on a Smith machine in the gym. Just move your feet out about a foot in front of you and then perform a squat that way. Just please make sure that your rack is bolted down to the ground or very sturdy. All right, and again, for demonstration purposes, I'm not gonna do the chains and everything just to save some time, but you can also do a vertical leg press. It's gotta get comfortable here. So this is just like a Smith machine. If you were laying on a bench, you can press like this. Now be careful, do this with shoes so you don't slip off. You can do this sitting on a bench or I like to just do it on the floor and you can do regular leg press. Or you can switch over and do single and that works great too. So if you have one of these blocks or a step, you could use a textbook, cinder block, whatever you have, you can do calf raises. So you want to get into a position, and again, this starting position, I would use the chains to keep this in place, so I wouldn't have to do this whole get up here. We 
have something to hold on to. Get underneath. And you position that on your back. You wouldn't do a ton of weight, or you could add a bar pad there. And you can do donkey cab raises. And you can do seated cab raises. You can put the bar pad on here, like one of those squat neck pads, to save your knees if you start going heavy. But it should work great. Alright, sticking with legs, you can do Romanian deadlifts or stiff-legged deadlifts, whichever one you prefer. You can adjust it here. Come down. Back up. Now, if you have the weight on the side with a plate, it's probably going to stop about here, but it should give you a full range of motion that you need. And just like with the barbell, you can do the single handles to do Romanian deadlifts or stiff-legged deadlifts. They're very similar exercises, they're slightly different. But with weight plates, we'd probably be about here on it. And you'd stand up, do the same thing for a Romanian deadlift. You can go right into a regular deadlift, starting from the ground here. You might need to position these a little bit lower. I'm going to keep them where they're at. But bend down, back straight. And then you have the option to go with pronated or supinated grip, or you can go neutral depending on the handles you have. I'm going to keep it neutral here. Stand up. And again, the weight will probably stop here with plates on it. You could actually do kickbacks with these too. If you think about the machines at the gym for kickbacks, there's basically just a platform and you're pushing against it, almost like a reverse leg press. You can mimic that very well. You can either do the bar or I like to do it one leg at a time. Find a comfortable position in your rack. Then I'm against the wall so it makes it easy, but you can hold on to your rack, bar, anything you have, and then kick straight out and up. the same position, you can do goblet squats, just like if you're holding a kettlebell up at your chest. Hold it up here, normal squat down, and then up. And one of my absolute favorites that I want to show you is the belt squat. If you have back pain, belt squats, exactly what it sounds like, you put a belt on and you squat the weight from the belt. It takes all of the stress off of your shoulders and back. Now I'm doing it up here. I would do it bent down with weight on it to get that into a comfortable position where you can squat down and up. And depending on the chain, I have a lot of different chains that came with my machines. So you can use a longer chain to get the right range of motion. Make sure this lever doesn't come up hit you between the legs. But go a little bit wide. If you have something to hold on to, that helps too, because you can keep your upper body straight, or else you're going to find you might end up bending a little too much. So if you have something to hold on to, that's great. If not, totally fine. Put a weight peg in there, so you can put plates on there. And squat. Get it into a position where full extension, and you pull up towards your lats. And I'll just show you on this side, even though this is where the weight would go, and pull. And if you set up a flat bench, just like if you had dumbbells, you can do single arm rows this way. Off the ground, and pull. If you like the machines for seated rows at the gym, you can do the same thing. Set it up so your chest is supported. Back up a little bit. Set it up so the bar is a little bit low and then that you're pulling a little bit up. I find that one to be the most comfortable. You can position it however you want, but because, again, we're on a lever, the weight's going to come up a little bit, so you want to position it a little bit lower so that way you're pulling right towards your lats.
One machine I really like at the gym is the Rose Upper Rose, I guess you can call them. I don't know the technical word, but the machine where it's up here and you're pulling down. Now you can't do that with a lever. It has to be some kind of push or pull towards you. You can't really pull down because you can't distribute the weight that way. So I have resistance bands and this is where these come in handy. What you can do is wrap a resistance band around the arm and then to something else you have. So in this case I have a peg on the back of my rack that I can wrap it to. Now this is not going to be the best demonstration, but you should be able to see it. And I'll give you a different angle in case you can't, where the weight's up here and it's pulling down. Now I don't put weight on it because it kind of defeats the purpose. The weight's going to assist you because gravity. So you can add more resistance bands to make this harder. But you put it up here with the resistance band and pull down towards you to get more of a lat, like a pull down, not exactly like a lat pull down, but similar. And the more resistance bands you put on there, obviously the harder it will be. And utilizing the bar once more, we can do regular bent over rows. Get my dish out of the way. Bend over like this and pull. Just like barbell, just a way to switch things up, give it more similar feel to a Smith machine. One of my favorites to do, chest supported rows. Now you can do seated, like I was doing before with the pulling from here, just a regular seated row, but you can't go quite as heavy. When you do something like this, you're working against gravity. So you can handle more weight and it'll make it more difficult. And there you go. So we can do skull crushers. I'm going to start with it up here, but I would obviously position this with the chains to give me a better starting position. But you can come down here, get into a comfortable position. Keep the elbows tucked in. There you go. One other thing you can do here is just normal shrugs. I would do these in the Smith machine a lot at the gym as well. Whatever hand position is comfortable for you, you can load up the weight and a very simple one to shrug. If you can get these into the right position, which is basically a perfect horizontal position, with your hips, you should be able to get it to a point where you can comfortably curl, take a step back, curl. So the range of motion is obviously not ideal, but because this is a lever, unlike a Smith machine where it's just straight, because this does come back a little bit, you can get a pretty comfortable bicep curl if needed. And as a bonus, there's probably a hundred different things you can do with these, but I like to use the lever arms to use the handles outside of the rack. I don't have an attachment for dips for my rack, so I use the lever arms for that purpose, and it works amazingly well. And then likewise, you can do it for something like inverted rows. A lot of people will do that with a barbell on the rack, but if you like supersetting like I do, this allows you to use the barbell for an exercise and then move over to the inverted rows, which is great or there are probably a ton of different creative movements that you can do using these handles. That's all I got. You are officially a lever arm expert. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll answer as many as I can, try to be as helpful as I can. I obviously don't know everything, but I've been using these now for the majority of the year. Uh, there are a ton more exercises you can do. I just wanted to run through my favorites, but you can get creative, let me know if there's other ones you're doing, or if you have questions on how you could possibly set something else up, I'll do my best to help. And I'll try to do a little bit more, is this crooked? I think this is crooked, whatever. I'm trying to do more video content, so I'll try to do some more home gym stuff, but if you check out, I did a walkthrough of the equipment I have, a breakdown of my leg extension machine and all the different things you could do with it. I'm gonna try to do more videos like that, so stay tuned. There should be more like that. Uh, but let me know if you like this and hit me with any and all questions. I got you. 
Also, I was not expecting this to take an hour and a half, and I am sweating. Ooh. You did great.